Hey everyone, welcome to Swift Arcade. I'm your host, Jonathan Rasmussen. Today I want to talk about how to extract views from applications. This is something we do all the time in iOS. It's not always clear when we should extract a view versus a view controller. So today I've created a fake app. We're going to extract some views and look at the mechanics behind what kind of decisions we need to make and how that actually works. Okay, let's begin. Okay, so I've got a simple app here. This is a app with a image, a couple labels. There's a table view down here. And when you select the table view, it changes the view above doing a slight little fade in animation. And what we're going to look at here is how we can take this app and do some very simple uh, refactoring to it to really take a large view controller and make it smaller. So we're going to do this in two parts. In part one, we're going to extract this view up here into its own game view. And then down here, we're going to extract this into a view controller and we're going to compare and see what the different mechanics are and what you have to do when you're extracting a view versus a view controller. But let's start with the view. Okay, so here you can see we've got very simple architecture. We've got a game view we're going to extract from the top and a game table view controller we're going to extract from the bottom. Starting with the view, the first thing you have to understand is whenever you extract a view, there's two sets of constraints. One, there's the parent set of constraints. And secondly, you've got the child set of constraints. In other words, how you want to lay out that extracted view within itself. The parent constraints are pretty simple because we've already done these. Just by virtue of building the app, we know how we want this view to appear in the view controller. And these are really the constraints in the parent view controller for how this child view is going to lay itself out. But when we extract it, there's a couple things we need to think about. For example, when we extract this game view, which happens to be a stack view with an image and a couple labels, how should it lay itself out within itself? Should we add the padding within this sub view or should we make it flush and completely go to the edge? I usually like going flush and completely to the edge and let the parent decide how much padding and spacing to do with auto layout and that around it. But let's now take a look at an example and see what this actually looks like in code. So just quickly walking through the code at a high level, here I have a game service object, which is just responsible for fetching this data. Here I'm faking out a web service call to a backend. Then we have the main view controller responsible for everything you see here. And as you can see, we've just built this right into the view controller, our standard view. So we've got uh, image profiles, we've got labels, we do our auto layout stuff, we fetch the data, which then populates the table down here. And this is all pretty standard view controller stuff. Now this in itself is a pretty simple view controller. There's probably not a ton of refactoring we need to do here. It's nice and simple and contained. But I wanna show you just the mechanics of what it's like to actually extract some views and view controllers. So starting with the view, if we look here, we can see that the top view is basically a stack view. So this is stack view with an image and some labels. And this, these few lines of code here actually represent our view. So it's a stack view with some elements added to it. What I want to do now is extract this into its own view and show you what that looks like. Okay, so here you can see I have a game view, which extends UI view, not view controller. And here we just do the layout as if we were in the view controller, but now we're within a view. So here I've copied over the image profile, the titles, everything you see doing the layout here. We still do auto layout. So here I have decided to still add and take this stack view, which is really containing these elements, and make it flush to the view itself. And this is something you'll have to think about when you extract a view. How much padding do I want to include within myself, my sub view, versus how much do I want my parent to control? What I usually like to do in these cases is I make myself flush to the view I'm contained in. So this stack view is completely flush with myself, the UI view. I'm really acting as a container for these elements. And then I'm gonna let the parent decide with auto layout how much spacing to put around myself when it lays me out. So if we look at the view controller where this is actually used, now instead of having all this code in the view controller, we've nicely extracted it into this game view. So back in the view controller now, I can create a game view. I can decide how to lay it out after adding it to the sub view. And here I'm just 
basically doing what I was doing before. These are my parent con constraints. So I'm pinning to the top, the left and the right. It's got an intrinsic size because it's a stack view and everything within there knows how tall it is. And uh, it's a nice refactoring because I've pulled it out. I've removed a lot of code from the view controller here. And now it's just a little bit easier to understand. But do remember, you've got two sets of constraints. One, you've got your child constraints within the view itself around how you want it to lay itself out. And then secondly, you get to decide in the parent how it's going to lay itself out. Okay, so that's it for extracting view. Let's now take a look at the mechanics and where and why we want to extract a view controller. Okay, before we look at the code on how to extract a view controller, let's just go over when we would want to extract a view versus extracting a view controller. So just to set the stage a bit, remember view controllers contain views. So view controllers are the brains of the smarts which power our app, and views are those dumb, simple objects that react to touch events and basically just get drawn on the screen. So when it comes to views, views are simple objects we draw on the screen. They may themselves contain subviews. They can get touch events and change state. They know nothing about the structure of our application, and they simply display themselves in some state. The headline here is that views are pretty dumb. They don't really contain any logic. View controllers, on the other hand, are pretty smart. Though they themselves are not drawable, they manage groups of view objects. We usually have a single view with many subviews, and they manage a view state. So they have knowledge of how our application is working. They're the ones who go out there and fetch and get all the data and coordinate things. And they're the ones that tell the dumb view objects basically what to do and how to show themselves. So the headline here is that view controllers are pretty smart. So you want to extract a view controller instead of a view. If you find that you've got a lot of smarts, you need to do some coordination among some multiple views, you're setting the state on others, or you're fetching data and doing other background processing. That's when you might want to consider extracting a view controller. Otherwise, we're pretty much usually just extracting views. But let's shift gears now and look at an example of what it's like to extract a view controller from another view controller and look at these things called nested child view controllers and see how they work. So just like we can have views embedded within view controllers, we can also have view controllers embedded within view controllers. We call these child view controllers, and when we add them to a parent view controller, they behave like a view, but there's some mechanical differences, and there's a few different things we need to do. First off, when we add a child view controller to a parent, that child is naturally going to want to stretch and fill up the entire parent's view. It wants to fill up the entire app window, but we can control how its size and spaces itself out using frames and auto layouts. Now, when we add a child view controller to a parent, here's the three things we need to do. One, we need to add the child view to the parent view, and we do that with this line here. Secondly, we need to add the child view controller to the parent itself. And then finally, we need to call this method did move on the child passing the parent in. And when we do these three lines, what we're really doing is we're hooking the child view controller up to the parent view controller's lifecycle. This is what enables view did load, view will appear. All that stuff will happen once we invoke these three lines. If you're adding a child to a parent and you find you're not triggering the view did load and lifecycle events of your child, it's probably because you missed one of these steps. But once we do that, we're then free to extract all that logic, bring it into its own view controller, and start doing the layout. And here, just like we did in the view, there's two sets of constraints. One, we've got our parent constraints. In other words, how is this child view controller going to be laid out within the parent? And then secondly, we have the child constraints themselves. Now, when it comes to doing layouts and view controllers, there's two ways we can go about this. One pretty standard and one a little alternative. The standard way is to do a straight up auto layout, and the cool alternative way is to use something called load view. So if we're doing standard auto layout, here you can see we've extracted the UI table view, and all we're going to do is pin it to the edges of the view within our new view controller. And that's what we're doing with these four lines down here. 
So here we're basically saying this UI table view is gonna take up the entire view of the child view controller. We're painting it to the top, bottom, leading, trailing, and it's gonna fill that entire view, and we're just gonna lay it out just like that. And that's perfectly fine. That's usually how we go about doing these things. But watch this. There's an alternative way we can do this. We can actually use a method in our view controllers called load view, where we can set the table view to the view entirety of itself. This is something I only recently discovered and really dug into, and this is a really cool technique. Here, what we're basically saying is the table view, or whatever view we've created in this child view controller, we're gonna set it to the entire view of the parent. And when we do that, it's automatically gonna stretch and fill itself out and fill that entire view according to how that child is laid out in the parent. The advantage of doing this is it just saves you about four lines of auto layout constraints. You don't need to explicitly pin it yourself. And it's just a cool, elegant way of setting a view to fill the entire view of a child view controller. Now, if all this is seeming a little bit confusing, don't worry. Let's jump into the code now and see what it looks like. Okay, so here we have an extracted game table view controller, extended UI view controller. And here we've pulled out all the table information from our parent into this child view controller. And this is just a regular view controller now that we set up just like a regular table view controller. So we set ourselves up as the delegate. We move all that table view logic into here. Um, I also pulled in the fetching of the game data, the game service, because I just thought that made more sense because it is contained within this view controller. So that's all sitting here. And then watch this. Look at how we can do the layout. Here's the two options I was talking about. One is we could execute this code here when it comes to layout. In other words, we could instantiate a table view, add it to our sub view, and then pin it to the four walls so it's completely flush. This is one way of laying out just this table view within this view controller. But here's the second option. We can pin everything automatically by simply calling view is equal to table view. That's the one that's gonna take whatever our table view is, make it flush and stretch it all the way out within this view controller, and then the parent's gonna decide ultimately how that lays itself out. So this is the extracted child view controller. Let's go see now what this looks like in the parent. So our parent now looks like this. Here we instantiate our, here's our game table view controller. This is the one we just extracted. Now let's just walk through the layout here and see how this works. Here's the three things we need to do to embed or nest a child view controller within the parent. Here we add the sub view, we add the view controller itself as a child to the parent, and then we call this did move on the child saying, hey, the parent is this view controller and that's what's gonna hook up all the view controller lifecycle between our parent and our child. So when view did load gets called, it starts with the parent, but then it will trigger down to any children and also call view did load on those or children. That's what those three lines really do. Then when it comes to layout, take a look at this. So here we've got uh, our game view. That was what we had before. But now we're laying out the view within the child view controller in this parent. So I could go game view controller dot view and do the layout that way. Or I could just extract a variable from the game view. I'm just grabbing the view from the view control itself just to make the code a little bit shorter. Setting translates equals false for the auto layout. And then I'm just doing the layout here. I'm saying the height, the leading, the trailing, the bottom. And that's basically it. That's all there is to extracting the child and making it work in the parent. Now there was one more thing I did need to do in order to make this extraction work. And that is, you will see in the game view controller when a user taps one of these rows, I needed to pass that did select row at from my child view controller up to the parent. So here I did that via protocol delegate. I simply took the delegate call that was happening here. I created my own protocol called did select row at, very similar to a table, but slightly different, just so you could see the difference. And then in my parent, I have to register myself as a delegate for that, and that will get passed to me in the parent view controller, and then I can decide what to do when someone does select one of these rows. And in this case, 
you'll see I actually go to my game table view controller games. I get the game out of there and then I just change the alpha, run the animation. So sometimes you will need to add more communication protocols to your children to pass information back up to the parent and you can use whatever you want here. Responder chain, protocol delegated, closures are popular, but that's something else you just might have to take into consideration. Okay, well there you have it. Just some simple rules of thumb around extracting views and view controllers from parent view controllers. Really important skill to develop. It's something you're gonna be doing a lot in your applications and uh, feel free to experiment and try. It's not always black and white. You're gonna develop your own rules of thumb around uh, when to extract each of these things. But through practice and remembering how to do child nested view controllers, hopefully this will be a lot easier for you. Okay, that's it for today, everyone. Hope that was helpful. We'll see you next time. Bye-bye.